Welcome to the newest series on this channel. Okay, wardrobe, we have to have a talk. Welcome to the newest series on this channel where we'll be communicating our thoughts on X, where X equals whatever comment we feel like picking out of the comment section. This is Getting X Communicated. Don't even try to act like you don't like that pun. Click that like button. All right, and while you're down there, might as well subscribe to hit the notification bell, then all. And if you want to get excommunicated, just go down below to the comments and leave any questions or thoughts there that you want us to discuss on getting excommunicated. The first person to get excommunicated is Faith, Family, and Fun Tech. They say, I just found this channel. I love it a lot. Is this still active? Looks like no new postings in a while. So actually a bunch of new people found this channel recently, thanks to Matt Frad. Hello, 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 and welcome to Pints with Aquinas. My name is Matt Frad, and today I wanna to talk about seven of my favorite Catholic YouTubers or YouTube channels. Okay, this is the final one before I get to my eighth secret favorite Catholic YouTube channel, and that is How to Be Christian. This is an excellent channel. If you are into Catholic apologetics, you're not going to want to miss this. <laughs> the, the dude who runs this is just hilarious. He's so playful and charmingly snarky. He has responses to people who I would consider to be anti-Catholic, like James White. And so he'll go through James's videos and respond to him. And I think he's kind of gotten on the James's skin a few times, but not because he's a jerk or doing anything inappropriate. Um, it's just, I mean, it's annoying when people kind of uh, call you out on stuff. I've had people do that to me. And so I think he's a bit of a thorn in the side of James White as well as other, other Protestants. But excellent guy. And uh, he's doing a lot of great work. It is remarkable to me that he only has 7,000 YouTube subscribers. Please go and click subscribe. I think you'll agree that he is definitely worth, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just look at these photos, right? Like, why is he holding a teddy bear? Like, I don't know, but I like it. He's just a super playful guy, super humble guy. So go, go check him out, uh, How To Be Christian. Now, me and everyone here at How To Be Christian would like to say thank you to Mr. Frad. Thank you for sharing our channel. Thank you for getting people to subscribe. I do have one little complaint, though. Do you, do you see what's happening here? This is the bear you just mentioned. He's, um, he's letting it go to his head. He's not going to do any unpaid appearances anymore, so I'm not able to show him in the shot unless I meet his outrageous demands. But for the most part, thank you, Mr. Frad, for letting people know about our channel. Now, in regards to this comment, yes, we are still active. We're just slow posters. We don't have a set schedule here because we don't want to just be trying to get out more videos. We want to actually make sure what we're saying is worth listening to. Not that you can't have a schedule and also say things that are worth listening to. It's just we can't do that. We're not that good. This, however, this Getting X Communicated series, this is gonna allow us to do some shorter videos that are more focused on like very specific questions. So hopefully in the downtime between our main videos, we'll be able to get some of these out so that there's content going up on the channel more frequently. No promises though, because some of us here are pretty lazy. I'm not gonna point fingers. I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna raise hands. Or at least one. Just the one. Now the other person getting excommunicated today is William Newell. He says, would love some insight on Romans 4, 1 through 12. We asked him to be a little more specific and said, what questions do you have about Romans 4, 1 through 12? And William said, well, it specifically says that Abraham was justified by faith, not by works, and it doesn't specify of the law after that word works. And William points out that this argument seems to be used by a fair amount of Protestants. So that's a good question from William, and that verse does tend to be used by a fair amount of Protestants because it doesn't have that of the law after it. And we have a video on works of the law. The link to that is in the description, also up here in the card. So it's easier for Protestants to trick Christians with that because it doesn't have the of the law. And if the Christian that those Protestants are talking to has not read Romans, then this argument that William is bringing up here could end up tricking you. So anyway, someone here asked, William, have you read the book of Romans in context? That's always a good idea, especially when you're hearing a Protestant jump to a specific text in an attempt to try to make it sound like it's proving their point. As we see time and time again here, Protestants are always just going to specific verses or specific passages and just ignoring the context. Because when you add context to the verses, they never teach Protestantism. Check out our series, Christian vs. Protestant. You'll see it a lot. They'll go to specific verses out of context, put it in context, doesn't say what they're saying anymore. We got a list of that playlist up here in the card. Anyway, what Protestants do is they go to Romans 4. They say, hey, look, it says work here. That must mean all works. Already, that doesn't make sense, because if you go to Ephesians 2, we can learn that God did work to save people. 
So clearly this can't be teaching that no works are necessary to be saved because God's work is necessary to be saved. So when you bring that up with a Protestant, they'll have to say, yeah, okay, I understand God's work saves us, but this work is talking about all of our work. So I'm not saying all works, including God's works. I'm just saying it's all of our work. And they might think they just saved themselves, but actually they just proved that that work there isn't defined, at least not by that passage alone, because that passage doesn't say that this is not talking about all works. But we can read other passages like Ephesians 2 and find out, okay, well, we can't possibly be talking about all works because God's work does save us. So when a Protestant admits that, then they've already proven that Romans 4 is unclear as to what this work means. Now that alone does not prove that the Protestant side is wrong, and it also doesn't prove that the Christian side is right. So how can we find out what this works here is talking about? We can just back it up a chapter. And it's very clearly talking about works of the law, and specifically circumcision. You go to the next chapter, they're still talking about circumcision. So what do you think that the work that they're talking about here is referring to? We already know it's not all works because God has done work to save people. So chances are it's probably talking about the same works that were just being discussed in Romans 3, the works of the law, specifically circumcision. Because at the start of Romans 4, we're still talking about some kind of work and we're specifically talking about circumcision. So next time you hear a Protestant trying to use Romans 4 to try to say that faith alone and no works will save you, you could just introduce them to a little friend called Context. Who's your good boy? All right, after that was explained to William, he said, very helpful, thank you very much for the thoughts, eagerly anticipating a new upload. Of course, the new upload is just answering the same thing we already answered for William, so sorry, William, that this is not really any new information for you. Maybe next time. Again, if anyone else is looking to get excommunicated, just leave your ex in the comments below, and we'll see what we can do. This is How To Be Christian. You all have a great day. And thank you to all the new subscribers. That's, that's great. I will probably disappoint you because I feel like a lot of you are setting the bar up high. See, I couldn't even get that sentence out right. I feel like a lot of you are setting the bar up high because you trust Matt Fred. But that's a lot of pressure on us, okay? So if you could just, you know, expect the worst, prepare to be disappointed, I would appreciate that. That would be, that'd be swell. Because then it's like, whatever I do, it, it's gonna be better than you thought, right? So instead of setting that bar up here, put it on the ground, okay? Dig a hole, drop it in there. That way I can walk over it. I don't even need, if it's in a hole, I don't even need to walk over it. Someone can just push me over it. And I've still gone over the bar. So, yeah, I've lost my train of thought. That's what it is.